This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So we talked a little while ago about lists in Python, and lists are really one of the most powerful data structures because there's so much that you can do with them. I wanted to kind of go over uh, some of the more advanced features. As a reminder, you can start off any list with just an empty list, just an open bracket, close bracket, and then you can append stuff to that list. That is one way to set up a list. Here what we're doing is uh, creating, I think this is five boxes at different X coordinates, and we're appending those boxes to the list. So when I run this, it's gonna create those boxes as usual. And the thing that is different is that each of these boxes is an item in a list now. If we come back over here, what I can do is start to loop over the things in the list. One of the easiest ways to do that is just with a for loop. You just say for and then use a name. It doesn't matter what the name is, just as long as it's something you're not using somewhere else. So say I use the name B. I haven't used the name B before in box list. This is saying I'm going, I want B to loop over all of the items that are in box list. So everything in box list is going to get represented as B. It, it, each one is going to take its turn. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print B's positions X component. So we'll run it with control two. Here I get this print statement. You can see it goes negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, the X coordinates of these things. It does loop over them in order. So it starts at the first item, second item, third item, fourth item, fifth item. And it prints this out for each one of those items in the list. Now you can also, let's suppose you want to look at a subset of the list. Let's suppose I only want to look at items one through four in the list. I don't want item number zero. I can use this colon here to say, I want you to look at box list, but I only want you to look at items one through four. I don't want you looking at zero. I don't want you looking at four or later. This is called a slice because you're taking that list and you're slicing a section out of it. Here, what we would get would just be these three, one, two, three. So we're going negative one, zero, and one. We're ignoring number zero. We're ignoring number four. Uh, so similarly, if I want to make the slice narrower, I can go two through four, and there I just get item two and item three. So slice is really useful, especially when you upgrade from uh, lists to arrays. Those are incredibly useful. Uh, you can also remove an item from a list. Uh, one of the best ways to do this in uh, GlowScript is to first set the item to be invisible so that it's not just hanging out there on the screen afterwards. Uh, so let's suppose I wanna turn off item two. I can then say delete this. And then let's see what it does with item two's position here. So you notice I lose the one in the middle. I lose the one that was at x equals zero. I still get a successful print statement for box list of two because these two items shift forward in the list. So I've got item zero, one. Now this is item two. It was previously item three. Now it's item two. So everything shifts forward in the list. The list gets shorter by one item. Uh, you could do the same thing with item number three. <clears throat> All right, so here we remove the one at x equals one. And so x equals two is now item number three in the list. You can also combine lists. Let's suppose that I want to make a sphere list, right? So let's suppose I make a list of spheres and I put those spheres, let's put those uh, at the same X coordinates but lowered by a, by a Y value. And uh, so we'll have a, a box list and a sphere list. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a list called all list where I'm taking box list plus sphere list. What that's going to do is create for me a master list from the items in box list and the items in sphere list. So if I loop over the shapes in all list, I should get 10 things printed out. I should get 10 vectors printed out. And lo and behold, that's what we get because I have my boxes up here, my spheres down here. I combine the two lists together. So that plus sign lets you add the items of the list together. It lets you append this list to this list. I guess I should say it allows you to extend the list together uh, because you can have a list in a list. So I, I probably shouldn't say a pin there. Uh, let's see, you can also ask whether a value is in a list. So let's suppose uh, we make a list of numbers here. This is most often done with numbers. Um, <clears throat> let's suppose I make this list that has one, two, 100, negative five, three, four, five, one, 11. No sixes in there, right? We're gonna check for is six in number list. And we get a false because six is not in number list. Uh, let's try one that is in number list. Let's try one. 
and true. One is in numberless. So this in is a wonderful little logical operator to help you check for whether things are in, uh, in a given list. Uh, there's other built-in functions we can use. So for example, there's the length function, LEM. This shows you how many items there are in the list. Oh, I actually still need my number list here. There we go. So for example, the length of the box list is five. There's one, two, three, four, five boxes. It's a very handy function, especially if you spell the word length correctly. There we go, that's better. Uh, another function that's useful is max. This looks over all of the numerical values in list and returns which one is the biggest. So the maximum number in number list is 100. There's also min that will look over the items in this list and pull out the minimum. <clears throat> there you go, so you have 100 for the max and negative five for the minimum. Uh, you can also use this thing list.count. You put in an item here. So let's say I wanna count the number of times that the number one occurs in this list. I can go ahead and see that there's one, two, so I know my answer should be two. I'm gonna save my answer right here to remind me. Uh, so number list has one blank number of times, number list dot count one. So that should give me a two. Yep, number one occurs twice there. And that works even if uh, the item's not in the list. So let's say I go searching for zero. It will count for me zero because it doesn't occur in that list. Uh, let's see, I can also uh, look for an item in the list. So let's suppose, for example, I create a list of names and let's say I have uh, two Jeremy's in here. I can also count, I can also count this even if it's not numbers. I can count the number of Brian's and the number of Jeremy's in the list. Yeah, there's one Brian and two Jeremy's in the list. I can also add an item into the middle of a list. So let's suppose I want to add Steve into the second position in the list. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna print the name list, the original version here. We're gonna insert Steve into the second position and then print the list here again to make sure that he gets added. Sure enough, there he is in the zero, one, two, the second spot. Notice Steve was not here originally, then we added him in here in the second index spot. So that's a little more that you can do with lists. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time, bye-bye.